All right, what is up, you beautiful people? And welcome back to another Direct Strike Weekly Brawl tier list, boys. We're playing some Avatar today. It looks like we got some hybrid here. And let's look at Bountiful. Ooh. And we still have our spooky skeletons. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna put down some, some roaches here to start. There we go. And what's our last modifier here? Oh my god, we got some baby lag here. Uh oh, we have void. So we have reduced sight range. Okay, there we go. So brawl modifiers, we have double income. Uh no like less sight range, and we have mercenaries. So like these hybrid, and then we also have spooky skeleton. Spooky skeleton is going to uh <clears throat> Increase well, I just just have an extra skeleton spawn when our unit kills something. So there we go. You can see the skeleton here. It's pretty strong. Actually, the skeletons are really good against roaches. They're anti-armor. Um, I just realized that the skeletons counter the roaches. But uh, I'm just gonna zoom in here to see this fight a little bit better. There we go. Get our boys out there. Get our roaches out there. <clears throat> I'm gonna put that down over here. I'm gonna make sure I'm auto casting that. Uh, but yeah, there we go. All right. We got some Rainer Marines out here. So this week's Brawl is just going to be... I think it's just going to be mostly just hybrid. I don't know if the Siege units are going to be too big of a part, though. Because Void is definitely going to make it a little bit harder to uh, stay alive because of that. Um, put that over there. Did I get the second one on it? No, I didn't get the second one on it. Okay, whatever. <clears throat> get the Biomechanical Transfusion. Oh, I should not have gotten that. Could have gotten an Extractor earlier. Oh, well. That's fine. Uh, there we go. Speaking of that's fine, or something that I hope that is that's fine, is uh, I think one of the students I was teaching uh, has COVID. Uh, and I was in the room with them for like an hour. And today, I'm like, ooh, feeling a little sus. But also, I'm not sure if it's like just like, if I'm just thinking I'm, you know, like where like your brain trips out and you're like, oh my god. Oh my god, you know? Uh, or if it's like actual, or if it's an actuality. Uh, so we'll have to observe and see. I am vaccinated, so we should be fine. Uh, if anything does come of it, so that okay, I'm gonna try and spread out my units a little bit more, um, because uh, there are some explodey boys, and explodey boys are very good against me. Um, all right, I'm gonna get two more queens, or not two more queens, one more queen. So I think what I want to do here is uh, grab some of these power level upgrades. I'm gonna go for some tier twos. Oh man, bunkers are really good against Rainer. I think the best counter to bunkers is actually fire bats, because fire bats have so much armor. And then they also counter the things that come out of the bunker versus Marauders. Marauders don't counter the uh, boys that come out. So, here we go. Oh, man. That's a lot of explosions. Ooh. I mean, thanks to Bountiful this week, though. I think I should just be able to buy a bunch of Brutalisk and uh, be able to uh, go ham on them. <clears throat> there we go. Maybe I just need, maybe I just need to drink some water because I just woke up. <laughs> get, the, get some hydration. <clears throat> there we go. Let's go. Boom. So the skeleton reduces the attack range of a unit by one, but roaches already have a baby attack range, so I think it shouldn't really be a big deal. Um, what if I spread my roaches out like how I normally do my zealots? Maybe that'll do something. I don't know, because they, they are the same size as the zealots, so maybe that could be helpful. Hmm. We'll see. We'll see if that helps because I because I end up fighting this line here anyways, so then it becomes that uh my roaches just end up out of formation anyways. There we go. <clears throat> I'm just gonna spit on them, and then they're gonna jump. I'm gonna drop a mend. That was a pretty juicy mend. Uh, we got some skeletons in there. Spooky skeletons chopping away. <clears throat> there we go. I have a roach in there still, I think. I got two roaches in there still. Okay. There we go. We got Tychus here. We got a Vega. Oh man, my controlled Aegis Guard. That's a rip, boys. Uh okay. So let's see. Hmm. Oh! Our Manx just left. Okay. Alright then. Well, I mean, Tychus does have a Vega, but I mean, I guess with the Fire Bats, I could... Ooh, okay. This game is suddenly a lot spicier. Um, I mean, it's not game over for Manx just because there's a Vega now, but it's like, it's still kind of tough. You just, like, just got to get Warhounds. Vega doesn't kill your Royal Guards instantly now, so it's like, not too bad. Mm, I'm just thinking what I need to do against this line here, because this line here is just going to explode on me. Just like that, as you can see. Very effective. <clears throat> I 
I have to I have to go tier three. I don't think there's any other I don't think there's any other way. If anything, I get vipers, right? Um, and that's gonna be very effect very effective against this Rainer line here. At least Rainer's fire bats are gonna be really good against what Manx has to offer here, because those fire bats are just gonna burn through all these units here. There we go. They got roasted. Uh, I think what I'm gonna have to do though is just go for some brutalisk. I think. Uh, man, that's a lot of bunkers though. That is quite a lot of bunkers. Let's see. And then the next wave that comes up is gonna be some explody boys. Uh, all right. Well, I'm gonna save up for a brutalisk and see how it goes. I'm gonna probably put a few more queens behind it and then get some ravagers. Uh, I'm definitely going to need them Ravagers here. I'm going to drop a Mend here. Maybe a little aggressive here, but I'm going to need to Mend it a bit. <clears throat> Alright. Let's get ourselves a Brutalisk. And then... I'm going to drop a one last Mend here. We're a little, we're a little out, of, out of Mends here. Uh-oh. Not the Tychus Wave. Oh god. Oh, he's got two Kevs. That is what you would call bad news. Um, let's see. Put down a Biomass Ravager, and then I'm going to put down a few Queens. Oh my god, somebody just subscribed. Hello. Uh, <laughs> I'll probably see your name popping up on the screen, like, right about now. Uh, so, thank you for subscribing. <laughs> I'm going to increase the Bile Duck damage. Um, let's see. Boom. I mean, the Ravager should help out a little bit. Uh, I just gotta increase the armor. The armor of this Brutalist here. The Brutalist is gonna take a lot of the hits from the Banelings. Or not the Banelings, but the Explody Boys. But, you know, it was essentially the same thing. Essentially the same thing. Um, I think you can also make the Explody Boys do extra anti-armor damage if you buy the tank, upgrade them, and then you can sell the tank afterwards. Sorry, I, was, I don't know why I was trying to put the Guardian down. My hotkey was wrong, I guess. There we go. Uh, what's the attack range on the Ravagers? Six. Okay, I would much rather keep that attack range. I'm going to increase the uh, Corrosive Bile here. Kev is actually really bad into uh, all these Marauders, because there's just more Marauders than there are Kev. Oh, we got some Exploity Boys coming out from this guy as well. Ooh. That's going to be a little tough. <clears throat> I'm going to drop a Fat Men here. My single Brutalisk here, getting attacked by the anti-armor damage. Okay, we got some Skellingtons here. Alright, well, they're going to universally be kind of useless, I guess. I don't know. I need I need more Ravagers, though. Like, if I don't have enough Ravagers, I just simply won't do enough damage. And I'm going to put them out. I'm going to put them down in a V here. Oh, God, that's a... That's a hybrid. That's a pretty big boy. I think Rainer's got it, though. He's just going to burn his way through them. Um... Oh my god, double Boswell coming out from nowhere. Boswell's a uh, light unit though, so it's not too bad. Should be able to like, kill him pretty nicely here. Boom, Ravager's going to take care of that. <clears throat> Kev is going to take care of my Roaches really nicely, but um, we, should be, we should be good here. Yeah, I think, I'm going to put some more Brutalisk down, I think, though. I definitely need some more Brutalisk. Because um, the current one Brutalisk I have will start falling... Yeah, there we go. Oh. Although I could also buy some more armor upgrades. I think I'm going to buy another Brutalist because I do almost have the money for it. So, it makes sense to. I probably don't want to put them together like that. If anything, I'll separate it like that. That'll be at least a little bit better. Slightly better. Because uh, maybe that'll cause my formation to spread out a little bit more as well. I'm going to increase my weapons by one. Let's see, this guy's 3 through weapons. Oh my god, I need to get some armor on that. We got some medics here healing up my Brutalisk. Uh, but Brutalisk are not going to hold up against uh, Kev here. Kev is just going to burn us down. There we go. Uh, I think I'm going to put I'm gonna put these on the Brutalisk here. Uh, oh, Brutalisk have 2 attack range. Oh, so that reduced it to 1. So that actually might be bad. Uh, ferocious Spew, but I don't know. The Brutalisk, at the end of the day, though, they are just going to run forward, so, you know, um, they are fulfilling their purpose. <sighs> there we go, we got two more Brutalists coming out here. <clears throat> there we go. Going to cleave our way through all this stuff here. I see some Explody Boys. Oh, that's an Alex. 
That's an Alex, boys. Um, uh, I'm not quite sure what to do against Alex, actually. I don't think it's. I don't think the answer is Mutalisk. That's for sure. Um. Hmm. I think the answer is. I don't know. Is it Devours? Because like I, I cannot clear this ground unit here fast enough. So I think I think it is Devours. But I need at least. I need at least five devourers. Oh, that's gonna be tough. Maybe I can get some vipers. What's the range on eight range? Oh, jeez. Because these these first devourers are just gonna get stunned, and I don't want a leviathan either. I don't think. Uh, I think Alex can stun leviathans because leviathans are massive. Um. Actually, I don't. I don't. I don't know if massive matters. I think it's heroic that matters. I'm not quite sure if. Leviathans are heroic though. Oh god, there's two there's two Alexes now. There we go. Well, my three devourers here are just gonna get a they're just gonna get slammed real hard. Um by the Alex tentacles here. They should at least. Yeah, there we go. They're getting slammed here. And then Vega's gonna mind control him. I mean, if anything, our wave is pretty durable, so maybe I could just add some more, some more uh, ravagers to it, and then see where that takes us. I don't know, because um, Alex doesn't really have too powerful of an anti-ground presence. Alex's anti-air presence is pretty strong, um, but yeah, here I'm gonna add another, I'm gonna add some more devourers in here. Uh, oh, there's a size storm coming out there. Okay. Um, well, I mean, I got three biomass ravagers stacking up. I probably should have switched to swarm host actually, because now it's a two v three. Um, I mean, it's still not too late for that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put one down. Um, especially if our wave is staying alive. I hope Rainer. Oh God, Rainer, please get some Vikings. Uh. Cause I don't, I don't think in the in the long run I can handle Alexander. Alex is gonna be a little strong. Uh, there we go. I'm gonna drop some heal in here. Oh yeah, the way the way the waves are stacking up though, I think some swarm host could be okay. And I think I could probably put. Oh man, I don't know what to. I don't know what to put my skeletons on now. Um. But I definitely need some more devourers. So I'm gonna have five devourers, which is actually just the start. Actually, Alex is really strong against uh, medium-sized air units, or like medium to kind of expensive air units, because they just prevent them from attacking, uh, which is a very effective way to beat them. Uh, and there's a bunch of diamondbacks out here now. Uh, oh god. Oh god. The diamondbacks have stacked up real hard here. Okay. I mean, the fire bats, like, Reino's wave should be able to just crush this. Um, that's not what I want. There we go. Put down that. I'm gonna put down another one of these. I don't know. Come on. There we go. I got my devourers here. Uh... There's a Boswell in there. Oh god. I think what we're gonna have to do is drop hybrid this wave. There we go. I'm gonna drop a bunch of swarm hosts here. I know that's only gonna delay the inevitable. So I think what I need to do is get some more of these out here, some more Ravagers. And with more Hybrid Destroyers coming out, the Hybrid Destroyers are just going to like body this wave, I think. Um, they should at least body this wave. On paper. On paper. But it's looking like they are also bodying this wave uh, in actuality as well. Oh man. That's a lot of damage. Ooh, that's a lot of damage. Okay, those units are getting slammed. 
gonna drop another mend here. There we go. But that also means, like, because I've dropped my hybrid, it means our opponents might just drop their hybrid now. Uh, and that could be quite lethal. That's the one. That's the one disadvantage of having a a less player, less players on your team. You have less hybrid to drop, and um, that's not very good. But oh well, we'll just have to work with it here. I'm gonna increase our armor. There we go. Oh my god. Hybrid are still going. Alexander taken down. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna add some more ravagers, and I'm gonna add some more swarm hosts. I think into the mix here. I think I might just put skeletons on the swarm hosts. I don't know, cause like they don't really have a weapon range, and the swarm hosts are gonna just stay alive for the most part. And if they do die, at least they can spawn a skeleton to distract our opponents. Uh, but yeah, the hybrid destroyers coming out was gonna be seem to have turned the tide of the battle pretty effectively here, but uh, I'm just making max usage of supply drop. Oh man, but supply drop doesn't do anything anymore. Uh, like, it doesn't give you like gigantic amounts of money anymore. Oh well. Oh well. Oh! Oh! One of the enemy Stukovs left. Uh oh. And then the other guy's AFK. Huh? The Tychus is AFK. What is he doing? So it's literally just us against Stukov now. He's gonna have an Alexander come out every single wave. This is wild, boys. But we won the game. Um, man, this guy got left. He got left out to dry, boys. What the heck? All right. Well, I definitely was not doing the most damage. Rainer was definitely clean in house on that one. Um, yikes! <laughs> that do be a big yikes. I think honestly, Rainer's like Rainer's medics were healing us up a lot. If there was a damage taken there, I can't believe Rainer actually took, managed to take more damage than me. I thought I would also be able to take more damage there too. But uh, nice meme. I I think like just my front line just gets melted here by the Explody boys. And then there was like a little bit of a time where we were just caught up on the Alex. Uh, and I think, I'm pretty sure Rainer Medics were integral to just keeping us alive there. So yeah, there was that. Alright, well, um, let's move on to the tier list. Alright, what is up? We are back. Let's get right to it. Game plan, as per usual, we're going to look at the auras, talk about a little bit of overall strategy, and we're going to look at some commander rankings. Let's go. So if you guys are not yet sub, be sure to drop a sub so we can get closer to our next sub milestone. Uh, I don't know, I think that's going to be like 3,500. I don't know. Anyways, let's go. So for mercenary, uh, raw modifiers, we have mercenaries. I'm only going to talk about the raw modifiers that are, I guess, changing every week because we'll have spooky skeletons for uh, the foreseeable month, at least foreseeable future. So yeah, uh, we have mercs spawn one time use hybrid. We have void. We have some, you know, three less vision range. So we're not going to be able to see as far. And we have bountiful. We have double income on refineries. So uh, what are we going to do? I think... Every time there are hybrid, there is always the viable strategy of doing a timing push with your team. So just grabbing, you know, all the hybrid and popping them down on the same wave back to back to back is going to be quite fierce. But I also think what you want to have is a fast moving front line, like something that just dives into your opponent's wave and like crushes it or like destroys it very like just just, just smashes it uh, along with some siege units, like some siege units, um, because if you have siege units, their main advantage is that they have a lot of range. But if you have nothing to give them vision this week, you'll be in a bit of trouble. So I think you need a bit of you need a, you need the fast moving front line first, I think, and then the siege units or like just enough, you know, just enough, a little bit of both. So I think for command rankings this week, uh, I actually have Stepman in the S tier because I'm just trying to think like what are we gonna do against bountiful banelings? Because I'm thinking that might be the best thing out there. I don't know about the best thing, but like I might be, it might be like the hardest to stop thing. Um, just bountiful banelings. Because bountiful will just give you a lot more money, and then you can just go baneling, 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 baneling. And because it's a fast-moving front line, like yes, it has tinier vision range, um, but banelings don't really care about the vision range. They just care about uh, whether they're going to connect or not, and they're just going to connect and blow up most things. Um, maybe I'm having it way too high value here. Uh, but yeah, like in the air, Stepman is going to be a little bit weaker. Um, but I'm just thinking about like just how you can answer the ground. Um, 
There are some commanders who can do that, obviously. Um, but I think for the most part, it'll be pretty good this week. Now, the next one I have is Manx. Um, Manx might be a little bit controversial in the sense that you do have a fast moving front line, but it's not very durable. Um, but it is very high DPS. It does run in hella fast. Uh, and you do have some of the best siege in the game. And you do have Bountiful, which is going to mean that your your Royal Guards are going to train up faster. And they're, so you're going to have more Royal Guards. So if you don't end the game on a timing push or your game doesn't get completely smashed by a timing push, uh, Manx has the potential to scale pretty nicely into the late game. So we got that going for us. And then we have Karax. I think Karax... Um, is going to shine the most with the fast moving frontline idea where you just have your sentinels run in they die i think they still give vision when they're regenerating i'm not sure they might not um and then you also have your backline of i'm pretty sure carriers might be like the choice actually rather than colossus um unless you obviously have to deal with some units on the ground uh, and you also have your beam to complement your timing push if you need to the beam has been nerfed significantly but beam is still a beam nonetheless uh, next in the A tier, uh, we have Stukov. I think for Stukov, because air units have reduced sight range, I think um, Stukov's Liberators actually gain a lot of advantage because they don't really have a lot of attack range to begin with. So now your opponent's units are going to have to move closer to you. That also is very good for Alexander because Alexander can just disable, like, Alexander will beat, like, um, commanders who can only buy flyers that cost, like, around 300 minerals or up. Uh, because you will basically have to spend an Alexander's worth of minerals to start dealing damage to Alexander. Um, so it's really good. And because now you have reduced vision range, Alexander's going to be even better because of that. And then he can just like, you know, your enemies will have to get closer to you. And Stukov ground is already going to have, is already going to push forward really nicely. Uh, you can also timing push really well with Stukov with the contaminate. You can also heal your buildings. You know, so I think Stukov is going to do pretty pretty nicely this week. And Bountiful is just going to make his uh, tanks much more affordable uh, because usually they're not quite affordable. With Vorzun, I think you could do some like invisible cheese where you're just invisible, and because your opponent's detectors, I think, also have reduced detection range, um, you could just cheese even harder because of that. So maybe like Corsairs and Void Rays or like DTs and Void Rays, or like DTs and Corsairs, something like that. Uh, and Black Hole is going to help out significantly uh, if you do want to run a timing push as well. It might actually be better than Karak's Beam, now that I think about it, because Karak's Beam has been nerfed like so many times. Like it doesn't move anymore, duration has been reduced, damage, I think damage is still the same, but it's just because it doesn't last as long anymore. So yeah. Um, that being said, Rainer I think is going to be okay, or not okay, but like pretty good. Because uh, you can give your teammates vision for a long time, or you can give yourself vision, uh, which will keep your Vikings, which will help your Vikings establish air supremacy. Because um, they need that range. Without that range, like that vision detection range, they're basically really bad. Um, you could also go for like a fast moving front line with like just you know rain or bio run it down. Uh, don't care about splash sort of, sort of deal and like slam down some banshees or rainer tanks in the background to uh, support you so that could work too i think phoenix is actually sleeper op this week um with uh kind of i think doing something similar to carax except like like just like just going carriers i think would be really useful uh maybe with some legionaries and then swapping out your praetor suit phoenix into um whatchamacallit the the blah, blah, blah. arbiter phoenix because I think like with the reduced vision range, like being invisible is I think going to be just very good. And so if you can snipe your opponent's detection or just like, you know, micro the invisibility on and off, like it's going to be crazy. Um, but I think that's like probably like the best trick you got to pull. I don't know if like you can really go ham on like ground Phoenix as nicely this week because I don't know. Because your legionaries don't, they're not exactly like the same sort of tankiness as Karax's, because Karax has come back. So I feel like that is much better than just having twice as much health. So I, don't, I think for the, in, that, in that aspect, not as great. So yeah. Uh, in the B tier, we have Nova. Nova has a decently sized front line. It's not exactly fast moving. It's not exactly high damage. Definitely pretty tanky though. Um, her tanks are good if they can see very far, but they cannot this week. 
that's a little that's a little suspicious i'm thinking maybe like initial contact nova just like marauders just marauders just slam them down could be very good maybe you'll have to like you know add a few goliaths in there to like solve the air issue but i think that could be very powerful um because your marauders are really tanky too so it takes a lot more splash damage to get through them so potentially that might be the best way forward um until you transition to something else with zagara i think zagara's just gonna be pretty strong this week because bountiful is just gonna give her a lot more money uh hybrid is gonna be it's gonna complement her death push if you go for one and yeah i mean zagara just doesn't really go any higher because i think like honestly like her gameplay is pretty one-dimensional in terms of what you can do you just you know put down lots and lots of explosives and just hopefully run your opponents over um but with like less efficacy in comparison to stepman because stepman's explosives literally fly right at you at a high pace which is why i think i, I enjoy stepman more um versus the guards where it's like it's kind of like eventual you'll just get overrun by large amounts of units but yeah dahaka i think will do okay he struggles with detection but i think i think also he can't put worms down where there's fog of war so dahaka's like vision range is actually like just gonna be a little bit of a struggle so i think being invisible is going to be pretty good against the haka this week um but he does like small the haka is going to be pretty lethal in the sense that like you know you have a fast moving front line you're going to overwhelm and then you can also add in creepers at the very end creepers will be easier to buy thanks to bountiful so the haka could uh, be really powerful you can also eat some big hybrid with the haka so be on the lookout for that as well and next we have abathur um abathur is i think i don't know abathur's all right like the reduction in the vision range, I think kind of hurts him a little bit. He does have a pretty tanky front line. Uh, doesn't move really fast, but like it stays for it stays really nicely. Um, so you could probably go for something with like lots of a lot more swarm hosts, maybe. Mm. Uh, I think Ravager is still probably going to be better because of their AOE, and I think Guardians could be okay in the in the correct situation because Guardians are your sort of long range siege, and so. If your front line is staying alive for long enough, then Guardians are a good choice. Um, you just got to make sure your opponents are not building air. Hunter Horner is in the B tier. I think Hunter Horner does okay. You could probably do like a nasty like a uh, Wraith switch um, because of the reduction in vision range. So I think that could be really potent. And yeah, I'm thinking that's it. Um, and next, the only, the only other thing is uh, you'll probably need to... Hmm. Because Ground Honor just sort of explodes. That's literally it. You don't really have a lot of lasting power. So I don't think we, you can go for anything with too big of a range. And it's also kind of bad because it means that you'll probably have to scan a bit more. Maybe you could go Reapers and just like fly in there. That could work too. So yeah. Uh, next in the C tier, we have Alarak. Uh, so the reason why I have Alarak here is because Alarak's front line is just Alarak himself. And so maybe you can make something work with like Alarak Nuggets and Wrathwalkers if you really want to lean into Wrathwalkers. But Alarak's most potent, like one of his most potent units, the Wrathwalker, is sort of not that great this week because its advantage is its insane range. But because it cannot see as far as it used to, um, it's just not going to be as good. Um, Alarak being the only frontline unit that runs forward, not great. I guess Chicken Nuggets run forward too, but like they're quite expensive and... Uh, <laughs> I don't know, they don't quite last that long either in the fight. So yeah, um, you're going to have some vision problems with Alarak. So I think maybe you could buy Motherships instead. Maybe. That might be, that, those might still be good. I don't know. We'll have to see. Tychus is in the C tier because, uh, well, you're probably going to encounter, I guess, I don't know. Tychus would probably smash um, a lot of frontline units. Although like in big hordes though, I think Tychus kind of does struggle a little bit because like, you can only have so many Nuxes, um, and Nux is quite pricey as well. Uh, and I don't know, if your opponents are going to have a fast-moving front line with some Siege units to back them up, you're going to have to end up getting like a Boswell. Like, your wave gets all really weird and funky. I'm still not quite too good at playing around with that idea, like just like, you know, playing with that. And so it seems like it'll be harder to play Tychus this week, especially if there's a Death Push coming your way. Um, you just have to soak a lot more units. You, you'll basically have to be winning by a large margin to be able to like sustain like a hit from a, you know, timing push. So yeah, and then next we have Kerrigan. Kerrigan has a very strong front line. Like moves forward really quickly, but um, she doesn't really have. I don't know. Brood lords don't seem like the best siege unit to complement, but I guess you can think of them kind of like as guardians. Like um, so potentially it could be good. Um. It could be good. It could be like a different version of Abathur. Although Abathur has many more options um, to 
I guess, answer and deal with uh, his opponent's sieged up units, such as, um, well, I guess Carrie can just use his Ultralus to barrel through, but if your Ultralus are dying uh, too quickly, then, you know, <laughs> it's not good enough. I don't know. Um, also, because Kerrigan's anti-air missing, I don't know. It's not good into some some commanders, uh, so it makes her a little bit more vulnerable compared to Abther. Finally, we have Swan. Swan's uh, front line is gonna, well, be it's, it's gonna be in need of a lot of help already. Um, and then like Swan's siege is gonna be uh, not the greatest this week because like obviously you have to babysit the tanks, and now the tanks like can't even see as far. So you might just pass up on the tanks and maybe just go cyclones i don't know um definitely going to be a little bit of a bigger struggle than usual i don't know you might just go like hellback goliath uh science vessels you know uh and then <sighs> artanis tempests are not going to be too great of an option i don't think um because of the reduced vision range i also know from experience from a game you'll see which is kind of uh sad boys um Crusher ground could work, maybe. Uh, just like having enough units, you could definitely like guardian shell your zealots, kind of like Karax, and you can put a spooky skeleton on them. And then, so with the spooky skeleton, you basically made your own Karax zealot, but like slightly worse. Um, <laughs> I like think if that if you can win with like just pure ground and push through, definitely do it. But eventually, you're gonna encounter like air. You're gonna encounter someone who has like strong air. And Artanis is only real good answer, like reliable answer to that is either like mass Phoenix, and if you know your opponent has air splash, then it's gonna have to be a little bit of Phoenix, a little bit of Tempest, and Tempests are vulnerable now because of their reduced sight range. So yeah, their one main advantage is nullified. So yeah. Anyways, let me know what you guys think about the rankings in the comment section down below. Maybe I've missed something. Maybe you think something should be higher, should be lower. Let me know. Maybe Stepman's way too high. I don't know. I just feel like <laughs> just. A, stacks on stacks of banelings is a little hard to stop but yeah um let me know what you guys think until next time i will see you guys later the tires let's light some fires Need a light. they picked the wrong fight